Hello, I'd like to talk to you today about cases. Anybody that has bought tools and parts, maybe small equipment, little things, has bought things in cases of some sort. And I'd like to talk to you about uh, modifying them, making them hopefully a little better, a little bit more user friendly. Uh, but before I get into that, I would like to ask you all if you have any comments or questions, please leave me a comment here. I will try to get back to you. If you have an idea for a video that you'd like to see me try to do, leave me a comment and I'll see if I can take care of it. I don't know how soon it will be, but I'll try to get to it fairly soon. So anyway, without further delay, let's dive right into this. This is just a simple blow mold case, and it happens to be from Mac Tools, and it's a transmission slash oil pressure test kit. Simple little latches, handle, hinges, has here a diagram of what's in it. Comes with instructions, I've got my receipt. Even has a little cover to kind of help keep things in place. And as you can tell, this one's been kind of used a little bit. It's got different uh, fittings, hose, the different uh, gauges. But as you can see here, there's a lot of dead space in here. Can you alter this to make it to where you can put more in it, but still be accessible? Maybe change it to something better. Uh, most of you are probably like me. You've got a good sized toolbox at work, maybe at home as well. So you probably really don't need this in the case. If you don't, and you empty the case, what are you going to do with the case? Just throw it away. Kind of hate to do that. Maybe there's something you can do with it. Well, let me give you an idea. Here is another case. Yes, I did have to buy a second one because I tore apart one of them. It finally quit after many years. This one, though, I have modified, and this is actually my wife's toolkit for here in the house. And yes, she does use some of it. All of it, I don't know, but she does use at least some of it from time to time. Now, what's in it? I've got about everything that she probably really needs to use around the house. So we have... Some channel locks, crescents, pliers, side cutters, uh, bent needle nose, small socket set, little knife, offset screwdriver extension, a multi-screwdriver deal, tape measure, all kinds of good little deals. Now, how'd I do that? Well, all I did here is I cut this out and removed that blow molding. Then I took some of this material and put in here and this is some of it and I'll show you a little bit more about this in a bit. But then all I did is figure out kind of where I wanted what. I asked her what she wanted and yeah, some of these have been modified. They've got some Plasti Dip on them to make them a little softer and more comfortable for her to use. I just did whatever she wanted. So after that, I have started cutting out and making openings in the foam for the tools to fit in. So this is a nice little case, fits all in there. She can grab this and do about anything she really needs or wants to do. And when you put it all back together, you can pull it up, throw it around, do whatever you need. And it still 
all right there. Simple, easy to get to. Maybe one of the sockets might kind of move out or something like that. If that's happening, and if it's more than what you need or want, you can always take the top, cut some of this stuff down, and glue it to the top to help hold things in place. More on that in a bit. So anyway, that's my wife's little uh, case. We sometimes buy gifts for underprivileged children wherever the church takes them. So they may be overseas, they may be here. Uh, we found out that these cases were a problem getting through customs and stuff like that. So we took the tools out of these. And yes, the kids really do like these little tools from what I'm understanding. So that's a lot to throw away. I mean, we've got a whole bunch of these. So I was kind of wondering, what can I do with them? Well, I decided to make myself a nice little case for my eighth inch bit set. It's got my little cheap uh, screwdriver, some other odds and ends, different bits. And again, just some of this kind of foam type stuff. And cut it all to fit in the case and put some in the top to help hold the bits in place. So when it's shut and it's moving around, maybe I'm carrying it got it in the trunk of a car or whatever. Once it's done and I'm ready to use it again, hey, all the bits are still there and I don't have to go chase them, trying to put them back in the proper locations to get them organized again. They're already organized and ready to use. And most of these, like the extension, screwdrivers, things like that are fairly easy to get out. Some of the bits can be a little difficult to get a hold of, especially these little bitty tiny ones. But overall, they're not bad. I got this one. And as you can see here, I've had to actually drill some holes through the back of the case for some of my stuff to come through. Now this is a regular quarter inch kit. It's got some different nut drivers and bits, extensions, adapters, different things like that. Even my little bitty 3D printed handle, which is hard to get out. But I can actually take this and say I need a little Phillips screwdriver. I can just put that right in there and I can actually tighten things or loosen them right like that, doesn't take much room, and it works pretty good. So yes, plastic 3D printers, they can be handy. You can also 3D print dividers and stuff to put in these, if that's something you need and want, if you have a 3D printer. So anyway, nice little kits. I like the fact that they interlock Nice and handy to use. And uh, here's something else I'd really like to show you. This is my home tool kit. I keep this in the house for in case I need tools. And it's a little different than what you've seen up to now. Again, I have opened this up some hammer, uh, screwdriver, or, uh, sockets, wrenches, pliers, different things. I've got some little cheapy, uh, homemade 3D printed, uh, drivers for my, uh, sockets and such just for hand and not for actually breaking things loose or really tightening them. That's where you go to your ratchets and drivers and stuff like that. But all of this up here is SAE. There is no metric in here. And I've gotten to where I need some metric. So 
what I have done, this is actually just an old boot lace. And I've put it together with uh, some glue and some heat shrink. And then I put it down in here underneath this tray. I can simply pull that out. Now, here is my metrics. I've got a set of wrenches, some sockets, different extensions. Of course, they have the same drivers, so I don't need more ratchets or anything like that. I did put a nice set of channel locks down in here just because I didn't have any room up here in the top. I do have some more room for future additions. This here, what I did, hopefully you'll be able to see this, made a groove, kind of glued it in place. So now I've got a double tray in a single container. And as you can see here, it's got some of this foam up here helps hold this stuff in place. That way when I'm carrying it to wherever I'm going to use it, or I've just got it stored, the tools don't get jostled and knocked around everywhere. Very handy. A uh, lot better than what it originally was as far as the blood mold case goes. But... We've all seen these little cases, little Dremel cases. They've got all kinds of different bits and things. And they look like there's a whole lot of stuff. Look how thick that thing is. Okay, you, you, you should be able to get a whole lot of stuff in here. Well, my sister actually bought this for me for Christmas here. I think it was last year, a little added deal. And uh, as you can see, I haven't even opened it yet. But she had done this before, and I've got another case, and um, I've used these. I really like them, and after she found out that I really liked them, she bought me another case because she knows that I use these things a lot. So let's open this up and take a little closer look at what's in these things. Cut these zip ties, pull them out, open this up. So you've got some different cutters and sanding uh, drums, some little discs and stuff, buffing wheels and so on and so forth. But here's the deal. When you get to something like this, you've only got a little bit here and look at all that space. You can actually take these, get this open, Take these out. That's all there is. Just what you can see. Look at how much more room there is there. So you could do some modification here. And believe it or not, yes, they are all like this. Lots of extra room. Just what you can see. That's all there is. Oh, instructions here in the bottom of this one. Yeah, like you really need that. This here, same thing. Just what you can see up there. Got a lot of extra space down here that you could do something with. Lots of just dead space. But it's not blow molded, so you don't have to cut out the layer. So this is a little different. And a little easier to work with because you're not having to take something to gut it to get where you can add stuff. Anyway, let's put this kind of back together for right now and I'll just put it over here to the side and I'll show you what I did with my old case. Now this is the same, same case as that one. I did take, I'm not going to be hanging it, so I took this top piece off of this. Other than that, they're the exact same thing. But, look at what I've done here. I've removed everything. Occasionally, some of these smaller discs do kind of move around some. But, after taking 
some of this stuff again and filling these in I've taken and put holes in these or slots or whatever needed to be done to hold the stuff I've got in here so I've got like the little diamond grinder uh, little burrs brushes router bits just all kinds of stuff even some nice little saw blades these things are very handy but they are very dangerous so anyway I've got the little arbor for running those on my Dremel tool I use this one a lot and I really like it nice little cordless 10.8 volt uh, Dremel um, but anyway that's how I've done this and this nice simple way of making these little slots for these or any of them is just get you one of these little cutters that will fit into your rotary tool whether it's a Dremel or a heart or a whatever the case may be take your little foam material and all you really need to do is just kind of go in and then you can enlarge hopefully you can see that you can go down as far as you need or as short as you need makes nice little holes you may need to take a little bit of the fluff off but it works great now cutting these is different than cutting the cases so if you're going to cut the case something like one of these multi-tools can be really handy because it's oscillates back and forth has nice sharp little uh, teeth here and you can use the wood version, you can use a metal version, whatever. And this happens to be what's left after I gutted. It was actually a Cornwell long barrel air hammer kit. This was the bottom where the air hammer actually sat. And some of the chisels. This was from the top where the instruction manual slid in here and this just basically kind of helped hold this in place and I use this just to come through and cut this stuff now it does leave a bunch of this little flaring but it's easy to get off just a fingernail or a sharp knife you can scrape it right off this works great for cutting this you can also use a Dremel and one of your cutting discs uh, or saw blades or whatever you personally like to cut these. Get this out so you can get in and modify your cases. Now, what this is not really good for is cutting your phone. It'll do it, but it doesn't like to cut it because this stuff tends to move with it a better way of cutting this that i have found go get your little fisherman's friend whether it's corded cordless kitchen knife fillet knife for fishing whatever this thing just cuts right through it nice and slick real simple really nice so if you're going to be doing a lot of that and yes i bought this one actually specifically for doing this sort of stuff my wife would kill me if i used hers all the time so now if you've gotten a case and let's say it's plastic and you're needing to maybe you went a little too far or something like that how do you fix a hole well one thing you can do is just get you a little solder gun or anything that heats up some of the cuttings off of it heat it up work this into it 
maybe get some more of your cuttings, a little bit more heat, melt this right in, fill it right up. Not a big problem. It will stink, and I will suggest that you do this outside. Now, a lot of you may be going, well, how'd you get the little stickers off? Sometimes these stickers will peel right off. Sometimes they don't want to come off. And if you want to clean it up and make it look like it's something other than what it originally was, you may want to make sure and get all the stickers off. Uh, if it doesn't just peel right off, my suggestion is something like this goof off. You can spray it, let it sit for a little bit. Usually they'll peel right off. Does it have to be goof off? No. You can get some oops or anything like that that helps remove the glue. Anything, whatever you like, just try it. Uh, I've seen people use like starting fluid and stuff. I don't really say that's a good idea, but apparently it does work. Uh, so anyway, something else. Say you've got a case and you're wanting to keep the casing but you just want to add a tool or two, maybe a extension or possibly a socket that you need to add to it. How do you do that? Well, let me get a socket or something like that. Let's just grab this little thing. Grab your whatever you're wanting to put in there, something to hold it with, preferably metal that won't conduct too much heat. Hold it and then heat this thing up with a nice little hot air gun. You can use something like that, just heat it up and then press it in where you're wanting to go. Don't have a hot air gun? How about a nice little uh, butane-powered torch? Simple, easy. Click it on, lock it in place. Start heating that socket up. And if you're not sure how much heat it takes to start making this thing move, get it pretty warm, not real hot, and then just try it. See if it's starting to move. If it's not, you know you need to heat it a lot more. Get it good and hot until it finally does. Yes, this will work. I have used it before. But say you've got something that's some thick plastic. Maybe this thing isn't uh, heating up as fast as you'd like. Nice little uh, propane torch, little plumbing item. These things work a whole lot better. And again, all you really need to do is heat that socket up. And keep trying it. And you can see it's starting to make a little impression. You don't want to go too much because you will catch the plastic on fire. You can burn things down. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm not wanting my socket to stay in this piece of plastic. But you can kind of start getting the idea here. It is starting to melt into it. Once you get it in there deep enough and if it does break through, rip, maybe it comes apart, whatever. Again, take you some plastic. Zip ties work well if you don't have some regular plastic. Melt that in there. 
or you can even take some super glue and some baking soda that works great for closing up holes and such I know uh, there's been quite a bit to this uh, video hope you all have learned a little something maybe inspired you to do something like this for yourself does it have to be for tools no it can be for anything you might want or need a case go to the store buy you a little tackle box or something like that maybe you're into doing uh, arts and crafts and you need something modified again you can take a uh, fishing box use something like a multi-tool or a soldering gun or maybe even a electric knife to cut out the parts that you need to get rid of uh, then you can add your uh, foam material if that's what you're going to use maybe you just need to take some out to fit your stuff in that's fine you're done okay um, something else you can do if you've got something that you really need to stay in place good and something like that hot melt glue gun works wonders or you can go to my little old friend your 3d pen now this is a three doodle 3d doodle and you can buy different uh, filaments different colors different types get this good and hot press it right down in there you can build that up just layer by layer and get it around whatever you're going to hold in there whether it's a socket or something else maybe it's some kind of arts and crafts like you got some glitter in a bottle you can use that or some hot melt glue either one hold that in place in your container and uh, it should hold it really nice if this stuff is moving around just get you some plain regular foam glue to the top that'll help hold it in place but it's it will move enough that you can still close your top hold everything in place you can move it from one place to another or maybe you've got a friend that you'd like to go over to their house and do your arts and crafts with you can easily take these little cases that you've made with all your stuff in it put them in your car you don't have to worry about keeping them level or upright whatever you can fling them in there any which way they're still good to go you don't have to worry about that once you get it in make sure which is top which is bottom and open everything up get ready to start doing your arts and crafts really nice great way of making these uh cases a little bit more handy something that you can use and um, anyway so I know I've hit you with a lot of stuff and uh, hopefully you're still watching and you've learned a little something and you'll try to do some of this and again if you've got any questions comments or concerns please leave me a comment and I'll try to answer whatever I can and uh, if you haven't I'd really like it if you'd hit that like button maybe subscribe to my channel that way you can see any new ones that I come out with and stay safe have fun and we'll see you for the next episode bye